All right, everybody. Welcome back to Sarcas. Uh, I'm Popcorn the Beaver. We have here Wheezy Jacket and Broads Magodes. Uh, today we are going to be talking about CCs, Super Content Creators, and Animal Army. Basically just the stuff around it and the community regarding it on Discord. So where do you think we should start off? Like uh, CC, Animal Army, or Super Content Creator? I think, we'll, I think we'll go alphabetical, so we'll start with the Animal Army. And, yeah, that's uh, fair. Weezy, you probably, do you have the textbook definition? And then we'll talk about what it really means. Yeah, so Animal Army is for those who have proven themselves to be exceptionally helpful and contribute to the overall sense of the community. They are handpicked by us and periodically added for their behavior inside and outside the server. So what it entails is a, it is basically a community ambassador role. Hmm. So if you are, if you've been exceptionally helpful within the server or just simply outside the server, like Twitter, Steam, Reddit, uh, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, uh, you will possibly have the chance to obtain Animal Army. How often are those added? Let me start with just like a general question, actually, before we actually talk about it. I randomly see people pop up for Animal Army, but it's like I there's no news about it. It just kind of like whoop, you're Animal Army now. I'd say like periodically, like three ish months. Yeah, Honestly, see, still better than some of the CC waves. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes like two to three. Yeah, two and just from looking at the Discord right now, there's 185 content creators on and 27 online. Animal Army online. So, like, what's the ratio here? How many uh, total Animal Army is there? Uh, I can't exactly say because I think some of them are offline, but... Oh boy! Do you have a I wish Discord also? would just show, but yeah, this our Discord does not show all the offline members, unfortunately. Hmm. But real, I think realistically, we have like, uh, as of now, probably like thirty-two. 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 Okay, so that's a pretty like pristine group. That's even more rare than content creator. Goddamn! Yeah. I actually didn't know it was that small. <laughs> right, yeah, well, that's... I mean. It was still smaller back then as well. All right, that's something interesting to keep in mind. But uh, so we kind of answered the first question I went to, which is what is it? it? Is a community ambassador role for being helpful in the different spaces? Uh, the question we want to ask next is like, what should it be? Like, should it be more prominent, less prominent? Should it have a, I don't know. For me, should there be like a defined set list or rule list to become animal army instead of it kind of being this ambiguous thing where every three months that you just see more green names and you have no clue what happened what do you <laughs> think uh i mean as an animal army member since 2019 like i think it should be like maybe i'd say like more prominent i would say but at the same time like oh man it was back then it was uh it was a little tough to get because you had to you you really had to stand out in the community like you can't just like sit there and do nothing <laughs> oh yeah there were barely the any of them on the discord when i first joined like i literally would only see a green name like once in a blue moon yeah like i mean people come and go as an animal army member like they'll get it like they'll, their name is just sit sat at the very top of the list that's true. And, uh, <laughs> uh, honestly, like it just sh it it just shows how um, helpful they are as a whole. But like, I still think it should remain as a community ambassador role. But I think moving forward, as for Animal Army, you could potentially have the uh, capability to be a super content creator or a moderator. Which I know moderator is the next step for. If you're an animal army member, for sure. But oh yeah, that's I'm kind of hoping it would go. It would lean towards SCC too. So that's actually yes. a good point. Is there some sort of pipeline I don't know about? There is. Yeah. So is the it's, pipeline it's, normal member, CC, animal army moderator, super CC? I wouldn't say that because exactly. <clears throat> yeah, because like you have people like Hammer, they. 
uh, like they're making content. I don't actually remember if they even still have the CC role. I know they had Legacy. Uh, yeah, no, they have Legacy and Legacy Animal Army, but they're not in current Animal Army, but they do have mods, so it doesn't really matter if they have it or not. Yeah, they uh, they became Animal Army, or no, modern in the old Animal Army uh, Legacy, I would say. Yeah. So I guess like oh well there's my phone again. I can't <laughs> two for two so far, Pop. Two for uh, two. I need to remember. I'm going to draw it on my whiteboard, I swear to God. But anyway, like I guess as a general rundown, it's like it's like general AA and then moderator could be like the peak of that. Because usually it's the whole concept of mods are the ones who are like deemed the most helpful. They can jump around and be like, Oh yeah, here you go, here you go, here you go. But they're generally from what I've noticed, and from all the talks that I've had with the mods, especially Cammer, because that's the one I got closest to, he basically said that it's a really weird system that, well, it's not exactly just like saying, because in FAQ, just to quickly go over it, um, moderators are chosen from within the community, and there are currently no open applications to be one. It's more of just a, hey, we see a lot of whatever, you can be this kind of yeah. thing from what I've come to see. So it's not like direct, like I feel like anybody could become a mod if they had like Animal Army or not, but it I think it mainly depends on like what they've done. Like if they're just that helpful to the point where they're like in the Discord every day, like basically giving such influence-filled advice or whatever, then they'd probably get it because they usually solve problems anyways. But then if you have something like someone who's just really good with, like, game experience, finding reports or whatever, then they'd probably just make them a mod anyway. So it's not exactly an upgrade, but it's probably the clearest path, I guess you could call it. And then with CC, it's just, like, you know, regular CC and then Super Content Creators, the hope and dream of most. Yep. So, There's also not really a clear path. So let's still take this one at a time. So Weezy, as a animal army since for a very long time, how do you feel the role stands now? And what are some of the things that you would like to see to get it to where your vision leads you? Um, I think what I would want to see uh, in animal army is like, I'd say there needs to be like uh, clear transparency within the role itself. Cause, cause, um, as of now, it's not as transparent as I thought it would be. I kind of wish it was, like, more steps to being an Animal Army member without, like, mentioning it. Because apparently mentioning it, like, kind of lowers your chance in receiving Animal Army as a whole. Yeah. I, I have personal experience with that one. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, I guess it's... Uh... Um, like state my piece about it just quickly animal army to me has always it's always been my envisionment to see it as the for example i'm new player i want to know who i can like trust to be helpful there's the new player section but a lot of people are afraid and what i would like really want to see it as is oh i see green name i know that these people can help me kind of mm. thing because it's like the yeah that's the trusted ambassador role it's like the interesting uh, the informational booth because i feel like there's a lot of um for example there's the joke i always make saying oh yeah new players can't read haha <laughs> funny because you know they don't look at ability descriptions they don't look at tips they don't read what they've been kill fire or what things do and they're usually afraid to go and ask but i feel like if you have like a clear showing like maybe even in game you could just put someone with a green name and i feel like that would be cool but i feel like that's too much of an extent and I just feel like if they were to make it more prominent as a role, like basically make it easier to obtain and theoretically even a clear definition of like how you get it. Like there is such a thing as a sign up sheet and a sort of approval of showcase of your time in the Discord. Then I feel like it could become that, uh, oh yeah, new player help role, assisting with community role kind of thing. Like you are basically the... You're the front line of defense for helping people. That's what I'd want to see it as. Yeah, I, I like that. And I actually went yeah. to New Player Help while I was waiting for you to, uh, while you were continuing to talk to see how many bright green names are showing up and actually coming and talking to people and helping. There's actually a, a, a good amount. So there's 
There's even moderators and other like uh, staff in here as well, like Lies. Uh, I see Camber helping someone. I see. Um, I did Listen, not know that Phantom Dergwolf is Animal Army, but that oh, he is. He became one recently. I knew of that. And the funniest part yeah, is that is the recently. person who taught me everything I know about Sar when I first joined the community. So I actually yeah. think that's really valuable on them. Uh, Crowley. I don't know how to say that last part. Crowley. Crowley, uh, uh, Zeril, when you scroll up. So I feel like uh, a good amount of people there, are already kind of grasping. Animal Army as well. Yeah, I feel like they're kind of grasping that. And so at least that, I kind of like that. Um, I wanted to ask you, I, I feel like I've heard members of this before. Uh, just like there is a content creator chat, which we'll get to in a second, there is an Animal Army chat. So what kind of conversations do you guys find yourself having over there? I can't speak upon that. So it's just um, easy. Yeah, easy. Go for so... it. So... So it's mainly supposed to uh, help improve like the community and the Discord itself, but there hasn't really been too too much activity with that. If I'll be honest, so like I think most people just use it as like a a getaway chat, but um, the entire purpose of Animal Army Chat is just to improve the Discord and community as a whole. So uh, it's underutilized is what you're yeah. trying to get at. So it, it um, basically is. Hmm. So, yeah. So people are just like trying to string together some flows of new ideas. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. All Interesting. Right. Uh, I'm trying to figure out if there anything else that we want, want to say about the end of army. Uh, I already learned a lot more. I, um, first of all, I thought I, it would out. I can, I, I do have a one more piece. To yeah, this, go for but, it. So, Back in 2019, um, so funny enough, I actually, when I was in the Animal Army, I actually got to play some of the updates early. Mm. So, oh, yeah. so funny enough, um, I was, I was, I got to be part of Super Emerald tonight for the skits. Cause That's the right. The developers asked me to assist with them. Oh my before. god, yeah. I remember you told me about that one day. Yep. God damn. Uh, I helped with some of the skits, uh, for sure. And also, um, I also got to a chance to play the update early. And also, like, the, <laughs> there was this one accident where, like, everyone in Animal Army was playing uh, the old Salvage Rebellion. <laughs> and I got, like, a couple of messages on Steam saying, like, hey, how are you playing this? And I'm like, uh... <laughs> Was it supposed to be like on the down low? Like it was supposed to be like a quiet. It was. Oh no. (laughs) Yeah. It showed up when it wasn't supposed to. Yep. Ooh. (laughs) It was very unfortunate, but it it is what it is. Like, um, (laughs) I kind of wish it it didn't though, but. (laughs) I feel guys, Weezy secret dev confirmed. (laughs) They're on to me. Dude, oh, that's no. that's crazy though. Getting to be a yeah. part of those skits. Yep. I also got to play the updates early. Interesting. So they've know, kind uh, of they've kind of updated that from Animal Army to CC because I know that's what preview events are, right? Is this yeah. just getting to try yeah. a I, new I season so. early? So would you like to yep. see Animal Army retain that role or are you okay with opening up uh, uh, some I wider think, eyes? So I, I think it's fine if Animal Army plays it maybe before CC, just as a whole to test, and then let the CCs promote it um, to, to pro- provide hype for the game and whatnot. It would be but, nice to have um, a group of testers in some way. Yeah. Because yeah, it would probably help them with figuring out stuff. Yep. All right. Sure. Well, Animal Army, weird little role. I didn't even learn that it existed until many, many, many months into me being a part of the Discord community. Um, and so hopefully you got to have a little insight as well, especially having Weezy here. Uh, but next we're going to be talking about content creators, which we all have a nice little part in, Yep. uh, cause we are all content creators across the board, all three of us, and probably have lots of thoughts and feelings about different, uh, content creator related things. So we're going to kind of start the same exact way with what is a super animal rail content creator as defined by, uh, the discord. Uh, I guess I can read this one over the role is for those who make content 
and in brackets it says example streaming or creating videos of Super Animal Royale and are interested in receiving additional perks from our content creator program including early play tests of new updates which are the preview events and such uh, and cosmetic codes. If you'd like to apply you can check the requirements and fill out the form here and then it shows like the link for uh, content creator sign up. Now also not listed in here directly the requirements for getting it are eight viewers on Twitch. I don't know if they've updated it as of recent, but it's, there's it's also the, the uh, it's still the same. Okay, so it's eight and two hundred viewers average YouTube, I think. Yeah, so yeah. I actually just clicked that link at the end of it on the Star Discord, and I'm sitting here and kind of going through it. Um, so members must be eighteen or older, or have parent and guardian approval. Actively create content. Maintain an average of at least eight viewers for live streaming and 200 views for YouTube. Um, I love the actively part. Well, that's it. Yeah. That's making me feel even more weird about the things I want to say as I click even the first button. How do I become a yeah. super animal royal content grant? It says, we're looking for contours who produce quality, engaging SAR, um, SAR content for their audience on a regular basis. So... so Huh. I am yeah. surprised that like mm. 75% of the content creators currently with the yellow name in the Discord have not been moved to Legacy then. If they're, because it seems like a huge chunk of them have completely moved on. And it's not, it's not even on a 5% basis. So I don't know how they would still remain as a regular basis, you know? So yeah. I guess to clear up a little bit of confusion quickly, legacy content creator doesn't mean someone that's been removed from the program. It means that someone's been removed from the original program and was oh. in it at that point. Because what it was is that the program changed when the requirements for it changed. Because I think it just used to be you had to stream the game for like, hmm. what what was it, like three streams, Sweezy? Yeah, it was like three streams. And I think you had to have like three average viewers that was basically just a yeah it, it was it was pretty much the equivalent of saying hey are you a bot no all right welcome in <laughs> pretty I, I don't mean to be mean but like yeah no there's yeah. a ton of bots out there that just like view farm and such but it, it was like oh, really man. different than for I, letting I, people I do in not, i don't think anyone in legacy cc did the uh, LC. yeah no it's but like the point is when they changed it from that to just like eight flat viewer average anybody who like was in the program or at that point or got kicked out of the program because it couldn't meet the new Rex was given yeah. the legacy CC role. And I think they even had a different CC chat. I don't remember if that was, yeah, it, it, they did. Have they did? Chat, okay. It, it, it did get removed eventually. So. Oh, it got removed. All right. And Understood. Funny enough, this got reworked in 2021 when the game, was out, when the game, when the game was going to be out of early access. Oh yeah, that's right. Because uh, I know that for a very unfortunate reason, I didn't start streaming till I think like two months after they changed the program. And for those who don't know, they um, there used to be different cosmetics you got for being a CC. Because yep. as of right now, it's the Twitch hoodie or the YouTube hoodie. But what it was in the past was I think it was the robes, then the glasses, or was it just both at the same time? It was so you actually got a Twitch robe. A YouTube robe, a mi funny enough. A yeah, there's a robe. mixer robe, and you which is the rarest cosmetic Star in the game, <laughs> because Star only Star one person Star. has it. Yeah, there's only like one person I know that has it. So that is, but yeah, that is insane though. Streaming when Star that mixer. when that program Star. switched, that was when they started uh, giving CCs because there was the you know the disco bundle that shows up in the saw shop every once in a while. They yep. gave CC's codes for parts of that bundle. No, it was specifically the um, the bandana to give away, which yep. I think was really the only time they ever did that. Uh, they also really... did. It. They also released. Um, they gave away Super Beagle skins, I believe. Oh no, yeah, but like that, because like you I also have people after. like Rot who gives away his skin, but that's Super Content yeah. Creator, which is you know something that we're gonna get into future. But point is, hmm. they changed the program. And then when they changed it, they started adding a lot more things to what it would provide. And then they changed the items. There's currently no way to get the older cosmetics, which besides haunting me to this day, uh, you know, I, it's just how it is currently. You get the hoodie of the platform you're on, 
a little yellow name tag in the Discord, and then access to the CC chat where they'll basically be like, hey guys, we're doing a preview event. And I don't feel like, oh yeah, I have to set some myself here from that, because everybody knows this now. Yeah. Pretty I remember much. they, because like back when I first joined, they're like, guys, you got to keep it quiet that there's a CC chat. And then everyone just figured it out. <laughs> Yeah, so no. we kind of talked about it wasn't really that secret. <laughs> we, we talked it was about not what being a content creator is. Now, what should it be? What do we want to see uh, happen with the role? Do we want it to be more hands on, less hands on, harder to get, easier to get, um, harder to keep, easier to keep? What do you think? Well, I feel like my view of CC is definitely one that I feel a bit, it stands out a bit more than most people's views, and that I think it's fine the way it is. I just feel like a lot of people have sort of feelings of, like, resentment either toward it or within it, which the best way I could describe it is that a lot of people are confused about what it's supposed to do. Because they, they see, oh yeah, you have a funny role on Discord, you create content for the game and have secret chat with dev because you content creator, but like, some people think, oh, you're supposed to be given more than just what you're given, and other people are like, no, you're given what you've gotten and that's it. So there's a lot of like, contention and conflict around like the whole purpose of it, and that describing one way that it should be isn't really realistic, but if I were to like give my statement on it, I've always felt that they could they could probably try to organize it better. Like I feel like there should be an entry CC position. They might even need to like raise the viewer requirement to I think it was fifteen that I believed was the most uh was the like the easiest to quantify for saying, Yeah, you are yeah. a content creator. But I feel like the best way I could describe it is that I wish that there was like an entry level and then like a regular role and then it would be super content creator. But I don't feel like there should be anything more than that because that brings issues of elitism. And even if everybody lives in harmony, there's always going to be that one person that says, well, why do they have it better than me? Hmm. So there's issues regardless of however you approach that. And like i i think either raising the viewer requirement to like 15 and then maybe like 400 on youtube for the average per video or just making the whole like you have entry level regular cc and then super content creator to try to basically say yeah you just joined you're kind of like the the greenie on the block you need some more time to basically say yeah i make content for the game versus i really do make content for the game kind of thing and then i feel like if you haven't like streamed the game in over, I'd say like to really be generous, four months, that you could be like pushed down to level one kind of thing. To basically say, yeah, this person doesn't really stream the game that much, or this person really consistently streams the game, or this person has outshined themselves and now they're a super content creator. That's my view of it. I feel it's a bit extremist, but I've always it's kind of switching to a tier hoped. system. Yeah, I've, I've always hoped that, like, in some theoretical world, we could live in enough harmony to make that kind of thing happen, but, eh. All right, so a tier system for Pop. What do you think, Wheezy? What would you um, like to see happen with the CC system? Uh, honestly, like, I just want there to be more transparency um, with how the role is obtained, because throughout 2021, I've gotten, like, denied, I think, twice into the cc program i mean i know my views were a little low at that time but they were really high at one point, or at least a, a good chunk of high but um it took me until like the end of december to get the role itself it was it was a struggle and like i did not know like who is who was in charge of it i think um their uh pixel's old publisher was originally in charge of the Modus. applications yeah they were in charge of the program at the time in 2021 so honestly what i would want to see is like i think there needs to be further evaluation with within the streamer like um they have to make sure like they're following at least tos obviously it, like, yeah um they want to make sure like this person is suited for the um 
community itself and they're not a endangerment to the community because <laughs> hmm. like you know uh, can't have any bad actors yeah but i just hope like they can entrust at least someone with within the team to evaluate the creators a little more at least provide more transparency on how to become a content creator as a whole it doesn't just have to be about streaming and making content it's simply being helpful is enough at least similar to animal army i would say and just promoting the game as a whole and spreading the word about the game yeah um i have i feel like i kind of have a mix of both you guys like um i think it's crazy that there can be um content creators in the official discord who haven't like seen or touched the game in like over a year or two years you know i feel like that just should be a complete disconnect and i don't know my other thing and i know i've talked to you guys about this separately is that i feel like there's almost more content creators for the game than there are viewers and so it's one of those things uh there's so many audience there's so many um cooks in the kitchen and not enough like mouths to feed you know like um yeah even when you go to any of a content creator's stream if they're playing sorry you're gonna see like 80 percent of their viewers are other content creators that are hanging out with them yep so it's one of those things where um i don't know it's just tough it feels like for me it feels like the bar is set too low and then because of that there's just been a huge like overstocking of uh creators and not enough of them actually going out and you know promoting the game growing an the audience programs are a bit too open yeah it, it really is and so it, i feel like they, they could make it a little tough so to get in pop on with you of just making it harder like 10 average like 500 views a video i don't know uh how to balance that out um but yeah, I feel like it also should be more than just um, views as well. I think they could kind of, like what Weezy was saying, there could be an extra layer, kind of how they see like Animal Army of like, okay, we have this person put in an application. Let's check in on some of their involvement. Let's check Discord logs. Let's check yep. um, how they're acting and treating other players on one of their live stream VODs. Let's see how many videos they've put out in the last 30 days and like just do some of those things to see that they're actively participating and actually going to be a benefit to the program. And just instead of saying, okay, this guy has a pulse and he has eight average viewers, toss him in there with the rest yeah, of the load. Yeah. Uh, I is- think I, I also want to mention, like, I think having chat logs in game uh, should affect content creator as well. Depending True. on what you say. Like if you got like a, a maybe like a warning or or like multiple warnings, you should not be a content creator mm-hmm. as a whole. If you're trying to aim for it, to keep the peace, you shouldn't really have someone that's just going off saying whatever and just blah 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 like in chat. Because I feel like toxicity, it it's a hard stem for this game to sort of like fit within. Yeah, and that. A lot of people like say, "Oh yeah, no, there's no toxic. There's a little. There's not a lot. There's a little." <laughs> but, and I feel like you know it could be a bit of a better job managing that as well. Um. Yeah, I know that we already passed this section, but can I just say, when talking about behavior, I think uh, the expectations of the Animal Army players are crazy because um, I've heard some stories of people having like one bad day and they type one thing and then they get a message like threatening their animal army because they uh, aren't keep like keeping the perfect standard that is built for the program, you know? And I can't imagine like not being allowed to have like a sour moment, you know, after a rough day or rough games or something. So that is how I know that program at least is not built for me because there's a little bit more leniency with content creator uh, role, you know? Um, and we've seen that a lot lately with a bunch of different situations and conversations yeah. between devs and some interesting characters in the uh, content creator community. So. It's kind of the reason why I know that I'll never get yeah, Animal so, Army so because I'm a bit too... Uh... Yeah, I, I'm going to keep this story completely anonymous, but there is a Animal Army person 
who um, they were doing like trios and they went against a squad full of sweaty people. And after killing the squad full of people, the animal army person typed one word, all lowercase, poop, P-O-O-P. And then they got a message about their in-game conduct. Are you saying, kidding me? Saying that if they continue that behavior, that they would be removed oh, from dang. Animal Army. Oh my God. Which is, and that's what I mean. Like, I can't imagine, like, not being able to, like, hit the gritty with my blush emote on someone after, after like, melee killing them or something. Oh, like, God. Uh, so shout out Animal Army people. You guys are a different layer of respectable. Thank you for holding the highest amount of... Uh, character i can't imagine doing that um yeah no problem <laughs> yeah content creators yeah uh, thanks Weezy. it's all you <laughs> <laughs> it seems like we uh we all landed around the same answer it would be nice if it got a little bit harder maybe a tier system popcorn i really like that if there was like a three tier system um of content creators tier one are those people that stream the game once a year you know, but they're or they're just really new. Yeah, or they're really new and they mm -hmm. stay around. Tier two can be a bit more con consistent, but maybe just like a middle of the line, like uh, creator. And then the tier three people are like the people who seriously play the game multiple times a week and make YouTube content and do community yeah. events and are helpful in Discord. And those would actually be the people that you look at for SCC. And I think it'd be a cool, more valuable way um, to know like how to get SCC. But Let's pause right there because we're about to talk about Super Content Creator Program Actually, in just a second. Yeah. Go ahead. Do you want to say another it, thing about the content creator? Oh, yeah. No, because there's um, like it's just like two things that I just wanted to like clarify my mind, especially about the program. And that's uh, especially when it came to the selection process, I figured out over time that whoever was in charge of it was quite biased. And this is a, this is a little fun story that I even have a personal experience with. So... I'll go back to like 2021, I applied for it. It took, I think, six months to hear anything back. And what it was is that they just forgot to send me anything. Mm. That was it. And then they sent it to me. I got it. I'm like, oh my God, I would have been it six months ago. There was a person a bit later, like going down that year in October, called Fufumi? I think that was her name. Yeah, no, it was Fufumi. Never mind. Um,. What happened was, I was basically in her stream when she first started, because I want to be like, oh yeah, welcome to the game, here's the stuff work. I was just giving her like a little new player rundown, like keeping the boundary, and then I said, oh yeah, if you plan on streaming this game again more in the future, you should join the CC program. Not two days go by, she already put in her app and was accepted instantly. Hmm. Yeah. And in especially in recent times, because I think it was 2023, you could even see people like Stargazer were complaining about the allowance of the program. That's a whole other issue in and of itself, but long story short, what happened was they had to wait a while to get in. But what I noticed was that people were still getting accepted, but by individuals. And that there were literally three VTubers who were all like, two of them were partnered that got in, and one of them was just like a really large person. They all got in before any of the wave, quote unquote, that was supposed to get in, got in. So I feel like for what it was, the selection process was a bit biased for sort of retention and showcase of the game, which is fair on a business sense, but in terms of just emotional for the people who were there and basically said, yeah, I'm really dedicated to the game. I want to apply. And then they have to wait six months and they end up figuring out that like three people were accepted before them because quote unquote, they might've been big. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was kind of a part of the problem when we're talking about that. Uh, I was. It took uh, you like a month, two months? Uh, no, way less. Like, I streamed for the first time on January 15th in the first week of February. I was a content creator. So, like, two weeks. It took two me weeks, from like when two. I put in my. Wow. Yeah, from my form to becoming CC. And, and the. I did it probably in the worst way possible. Don't follow my footsteps, but I just did the annoy Logan strategy. Like, <laughs> just check in with him every... I mean, hey, that's how he got mine after six Yeah, months. every, like, four or five days. And then when I saw all of these other amazing people around me who deserved it way more than me, had put in way more time, consistent hours, weren't doing variety, just like soloing SAR, that's why I made that one video, my open letter to the SAR community, where I talked about how the the communication had to be a lot more 
like consistent because they had been telling people for like up to six months, nine months, a year that they were like still looking at applications or switching emails or things like that. Yeah. But I kind of, they just see me like, oh, he got it after two weeks. Like, but I've been waiting for six months. So yeah. Yeah. It's a bit of a thorn. Yeah, I know. I know. And so um, they ended I, up, I had to do the same strategy, as you, bro. So. Yeah. They ended up uh, changing a good amount of things though. Um, that next month, that's where they the, did, all of did. the letters were consistently flowing out saying, here's exactly where we are a week later. Here is exactly where we are. And then that's when we saw the enormous wave of content creators joining. I'm talking like the save the lost era of content creators joining all of the people that joined. Yeah. Um, it was and, wave five of like, large cc influx because yeah. that was all throughout 2023 it was a huge amount of cc's that just like joined the game because even if the game's like st like stat wise wasn't doing the greatest there was a ton of people that were just like finding the game through twitch and it kind of like amazed me why it's like why this year why not like mm. Late 2021 COVID thing during like the wave four. Like, I do find like CCs and waves just like generalized things, but long story short, it just took forever in some cases. And then like 2023 starts and like, bam, you got here, 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 here. And like, oh my god, I can't keep up anymore. <laughs> that is crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, anything else to say about the content creator program? We'll have about 20 minutes to talk about the Super CC, which I feel like is a perfect amount of time for the things we're oh, yeah. going to say. Um, I have my thoughts about like certain aspects of CC, but in truth, they're a bit more like they're a bit too extremist. So I'm going to reserve on that. Mm. <laughs> Good idea, yeah, popcorn. <laughs> um, all right. So you guys have both defined one of the roles. So I'll hit up the super content creators here. Um, yep. Uh, these are our content creators who have been exceptional supporters of the game and community over time. We handpick who we add to this role, so just keep being active on your platform as well as inside our community, and we might reach. Oh boy! Once again, being a active. bunch, a bunch of keywords there that we can <laughs> look down the list and probably uh, uh, we're not going to say specifics, but yeah. Oh boy! Once again. Um, Hmm. It's worth noting that Super Content Creator is an incredibly small role. Like, there is very little people within so that So what role. is our total number here? Do we know off the top of our head? Uh, From memory, I think it's like 17? I might be wrong, but... I, I th Yeah, I think it was 17. I am Googling it. We can probably just find it based upon, like, the SAR wiki and basing it. You know, I'm just going to open real quick. Wait, there isn't a section of the wiki for super content creators? No, but there no, is special items. And, uh... Oh, super content creator items. There's 15 right now. Yeah, that's what it is. Would you say 15 right now? Yep. Like, 15 to 17. Currently 15. All right, 15. Interesting. So 15, okay, so 15. super content creators right now. Um, well, let's just start. How many of those do we think are active, period, following that first definition? Seven. Probably well, half. Uh, half. Actually, let me just run down the list. I don't even I know if I it. still know half these names. I've been in the community let's for about see. one year and six months now. Well, what do you uh, define active in this sense, actually? Like, do you define yeah. it, like, bi-weekly, bi-monthly, or by like, a few months? I don't know. Like, I just want to... I would say... Phew, I would months. I would pray That's once a month. Active. I would pray once a month if you're a super content creator. You've been given this huge light, this huge platform to be able to be the tip top of promoting this game, you know, and being the beacon. I would hope once a month, right? So by monthly, I've seen seven people on the list go. And it's worth noting that um for one, it's unfortunate and I feel like we don't need to talk about that because that is No. That's yeah, a totally it's subject. it's a different subject, but the point is is that basically in terms of by a monthly basis, I do consistently see at the very like being very generous seven of those people on any given month. If you expand it to like by 2 to 3 months, it can go up to like 8 or even 9 in some cases, but there is still a good chunk of super content creators that just aren't here, haven't shown up in a while and basically just disappeared from the face and mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we, they, like, have, they have other passions to work on. It is okay. worth noting that some of them still are very aware of the game's existence. Like, for example, Buff Pup is still very aware of, like, SAR as a whole, especially noting that she did, like, sort of, like, talk regarding on Pixel's tweet for independence from Modus. So they are still aware of, like, the game. People like Freak are still aware of the game. Rot is still very aware of the game. And Shia Bun, I have gotten, like, some info that he has had thoughts of coming back to the game as of recent, but there's nothing cemented. So, yeah. with, with like, who's left, I can probably, like, just name it straight up, like, who's still here. And consistently, of those seven people, within that month, you have Johnny Kim, Irma, Enma, uh, Kakoa, Fluffub, uh, WVBBB, and Mochi May. And then if you expand it to, like, by a two-monthly basis, you'll have people like Blondie and Enochino. Sometime. That's basically the basis of who would be here in that time. Hmm. Um, so can we at least say this for every super content creator that has been added, have they at least been active on their platform and inside the community when they were added? When they were added, I can definitely say yes for a majority of them. Okay. There have been some that have been added to like the program and basically don't interact with the community at all. I can say names, but for the sake of, you know, singling yeah, people out, know. I'm not. <laughs> so, but yeah, the point is, is that there have been like, I think one or two that basically just, they got it and they're not really active within the community at all. But for the majority of the case and the rest of them, yes, they were very active on like either the discord in game and or content creation during their heyday. Hmm. Okay. All right. But as of right now, there are a fair chunk of them who just are not here. I'd say like one third of them is active at most. Because there's 15 and I'd say a third of them is active. Yeah. In recent times, it's a lot less. But during their prime, it's like, eh. Yeah, that's at least like a, almost a half. But... It's, it's an odd subject because there's a lot of mystique yeah. around... Uh, surrounding that role yeah because so... you're not clear with how you get it and i feel like that's fair because from my view of it at least i feel like if you were to make it so that's super content creator is like clearly defined as how you get it there'd be people who sort of like go for it but don't care enough while going for it because in the selection process i can safely say that like pretty much every single one of the super content creators does care about the game deeply enough to the point where, like, they're willing to stay, they're willing to, like, play during their time enough and when they got it to play. But the thing is about it is that if you were to make it too clear, there'd be people who just go for it, get it, and that's it. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be similar to, like, content creator as of now. Yeah. So I feel like it's nice that it's shrouded in a, like, bit of mystique. I feel like you can make it a little more like understandable but still have it as its mystique because i feel like just like mod it should be understandable as to how to get it in some way but there is not a clear definition of how to actually get it yeah i was hoping that we would be able to lift that shroud a little bit in this conversation but i don't even I know if we'll be able to give some statement of like the i okay to put it in another sense, over like the years in the past few CCs, I, or sorry, super content creators, I've sort of been making jot notes about what I see similarly with the ones that they add in, and a few things pick up, and then with, you know, some it just kind of like threw me off track. But I've seen, the best way I can describe it is that the people who get added in are very like brand reputable. Like you can have someone in there who's kind of like, you know, big smile on your face yippee i'm a very positive person like they're a good brand icon like you don't want someone who becomes a super content creator and to be like i hate this i hate you i Shred hate that i hate everybody <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah like you're gonna want someone who's just like oh yippee like i you know they're not like mr perfect they're just a good bean hmm. like they're not a bad person they're a good bean and in addition to that they're not just gonna make someone who comes into the game for the first time a super content creator for the vast majority, actually, I think everybody, 
it's basically been people who were in here before the game even like launched officially in 1.0. The only differentiation I could say would probably be Irma. But besides Irma, like everybody's been here for such a long time. So that's another like consistent part. I wouldn't say that's the main priority of what I've seen, but So time play is itself, definitely valuable. It is, but it's not like mm -hmm. number one asset. Like the number one thing that they're looking for is someone that could be the equivalent of a brand icon. Like you look at that person, you'd be like, wow. Like you just you 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 understand that they have it, you're not mad that they have it because you feel like as though they deserved it in that sense. And also because they're a nice person in the community and as themselves. Hmm. That's my view and that's what I've seen from it. I have a bunch of other jot notes about like really niche stuff like what's their viewer retention on this day? What's this on that day? When did they talk in the server? How many messages do they have? Like that is a nightmarish amount of bra statistics that I'm not gonna bore you with about but yeah as a general rule of thumb nice person fair average they have some time in the game and shown that they could be a reputable person in the community that's the raw nut like the raw like status of what I see super content creator as and what I've come to view it as over the years all right well what about you easy yeah. do you have any different opinions there like we're hearing from pop time played uh is valuable uh character I, I so what do you think so like uh super content creator it's not as uh, it should be a little bit more transparent but not like too transparent like pop once said but like i don't know how they evaluate uh super content creators as a whole like as much but I, I'm really hoping to see a, a little bit of transparency of how they evaluate these creators, but I really think um, like it should be more transparent as a whole. Yeah. There's um, more openness. Gosh, there's just a few things I would want more transparency on. Like, uh, for example, I have read this a ton. Let me go read it one more time. When it says um, exceptional supporters of the game and community over time, what's what is the scale of support that they're valuing to the uh, or like? What does that mean? What does exceptional supporter mean? That they have like, that I they have put promote. in the most time to the largest audience. Have they financially supported the game? Have they like you know what I'm saying? Have they yeah definitely really big. Have they part. verbally? just uplifted the game no matter what they've done that is the one thing that i would, I would want to know factors. more um i know but i factors, feel like definitely. they they can't um perfectly balance all of those things right surely they value some of those things more than other right or do you think it truly is a balance of uh f finance fiscal support physical support emotional support <laughs> does it break down to all of those things. That is the one thing that I have kind of thought about for a very long time when reading that paragraph. The small theory that I had was that Pixel themselves doesn't even know what they want in a super content creator. And mm. at certain given points of time, to so be like, oh, and then they'll catch it. But that, that's a, I don't know, that, that's like a really back end theory that I have. The main one that I feel like is that. They know exactly what they want, but it's really flexible in that sense, because there's been outlanders in terms of who they picked as a super content creator. And like I said, and I keep saying, I'm obviously not going to name names because that would be rude. Point is, is that there have been some people that, from my view at least, I see, oh yeah, they definitely deserve it. They've been doing a ton for the game. And there's been other people that I'm just like, huh? And I feel like in some senses, while yes, it might just be me, but within like that one time specifically, I saw a ton of other people in the community just go, huh? So I feel like at times they don't exactly know their method for picking things out, or they have something so hyper-specific that they're looking for that it's just... Like, it would probably be impossible to narrow down, but it has been narrowed down by them to such a point that they just, like, once they see it, they're like, yep, send in the briefcase. 
Interesting. Just, blah, 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 like, just, well, I don't know. <clears throat> there's two more things that I want to specifically talk about. Uh, one, how, or you might actually know an answer, but I'm going to ask this like no one knows. Um, how far ahead are they looking for content creators when they're uh, thinking about adding a new super content creator? Like, are they already looking at people for 2025 right now that they would want to ask as long as they continue to be in good standing over the next year? Or do you think like every four months they just go, oh, see, we should probably do that super content creator thing. All right, who, who do we got? And then they kind of just toss some names in a bucket. What do you think? I have actually figured that out. Okay, what do like, you got? I found that out, and I'm not going to say anything because oh. here's – Okay, well, I'll say what the number is, and from what I know, and this might not be true because this person just told me it's four months. Okay, so they look four months ahead, or every four months they just decide, okay, let's start thinking about another super content creator, uh -huh. and then they go a little – Okay, so they're probably already looking at the next super content creator after Johnny Kim. But yeah, line. no, I I found this out because there was a person I knew that was really close with one of the very old super content creators. And that basically they just told me, because this was like, I think, two years ago, that they just like popped into my DMs after I played with them one day. And they're like, oh, yeah, it's, it's four months ahead. They'll just blah, blah, blah. Like, they'll like hit them up, right? So that's what I figured out. This is, and I want to say, public information. I have seen people talk about this on the official Discord. I'm not like, oh yeah, I'm leaking niche info. Leak, leak, leak. Like, <laughs> no, let's not, I've let's seen not this. be a leak cast. Let's just be a... Yeah, no. Like, basically, what I found out is that this was a friend of a very old super content creator who told me the rundown of what that super content creator said to him. And there have been people who have talked about it in Sar General. I think there was like three messages of people saying, oh yeah, it's four months. Hmm. So this isn't like, oh yeah, nobody knows about this. There are people who obviously know about this and I feel like Pixel doesn't necessarily care if that like gets out so much because to be fair, they probably want to figure stuff out ahead of time. That's not like out of the window. Um, Weezy, do you have anything to add about anything I just said for that first part? Uh... Oh, not much really like uh <laughs> honestly i think uh it's it, it's a really weird process man yeah like, and i kind of agree with a little more transparent about i kind of super agree with what you said over there or said earlier about wanting more transparency but at the same time there needing to be a layer of like mystique you know like a layer yeah. of of uncertainty about I don't think that they should clearly lay out here's the five step program to potentially find yourself as a SCC, you know? Like I don't think they should do that. But I think that like for example with that support word, that can be a wild amount of different things and I would like to have a little bit more uh transparency on that at least, you know. Um all right. Well, thanks for your thoughts on that. And I really have one more thing about seven minutes and we'll hit that hour mark that we will love for all these episodes. And I just wanted to ask, uh, for your eye through your eyes, thinking about, uh, the people that, you know, and thinking about the last few CCs that being Irma, Johnny, who else was before that blondie. And then before that was what fluff and wub, right? No, no fluff and Coco. Right. Yeah. I'm trying to yes. remember the train. It's been a while now. Um, you got all the awe members of the art group, gotcha. which is yep. Fluff, Kakoa, and Wub. Oh yeah, all artists. Jeez. Yeah, um, no, I didn't think about it that. It was Wub first, and yeah. then they basically said, uh, "Let's give it to Fluff and Kakoa because it would really be cute if you had three super artists who were also, you know." three super content creators no, to be, to be, and now they have their item in the game yeah to be transparent though those are all great additions like when i think about no, yeah they're fantastic uh, friendly people. valuable people to the community that are also like like a perfect mixture of interesting and i don't want to use the word valuable but you know what i mean like um they've like done helpful, a really good helpful. job they're very yeah helpful with yeah helpful content as a whole um, they're also very knowledgeable sense. about the game yeah so that was a really good addition um but here's how i want to end off last 10 minutes um, through everything that you know, the people that have been added and the people that you know, who are like one or two or three 
uh, super content creators you would like to see added, either because they follow any of those metrics that we've talked about, they've put in the time, they've put in the grind, or maybe they're just so valuable and so supportive in an aspect that you feel like they should be given the nod or anything like that. Whoever wants to go first, who do you have in mind for SEC coming up? I've had like a list for such a long time. Yeah, I know. I actually, we've, we've actually talked about that. Um, I have 17 okay. people that through like my figuring out of what I could of the super content creator selection program that I've identified as, yeah, these are potential candidates. And so far, besides one very particular addition to super content creator, I have been 100% on the spot for figuring it out within that list. Okay. But for the people I think that I'd want to see specifically on my part, you have Setsuna Wolf, mm. which is a person that's like been in another community a lot and... They do come back to the game every now and then, but they're kind of just waiting for Q2 to come out, which, go watch our late, most, le I can't yeah, speak. Yeah, watch, go watch episode, episode one. one. Yeah, let's get, but like, point is, is that Setsuna is definitely a person that kind of fit the bill of everything that I thought would make a super content creator. Mm. Then you have like, people like uh, Deli Size, which he's been streaming the game for a while, been here for a while, and is, has a really positive attitude toward the game. He fits the bill quite well. And then for the like the last two, because you said four, it's kind of open season on my list. Like I could say people like uh, Umbra, both the Otters, Save the Lot. Like there's a ton of people I can list, but I guess if I were to specify two people, Umbra is one that I've seen that probably has, as of recent especially, the most potential to become a super content creator. And then in addition to that, one more would probably be uh like okay if i'm being honest it's always been in the back of my head but i thought that making logan a super content creator would just be the funniest thing ever <laughs> is he does stream <laughs> and he does stream the game does, so, has logan ever streamed sar no he, he has like he, he has, has a oh, ton he of has time. before okay because like as long as I've known Sar and as long as I've watched Funko Logan streams, I've never seen him stream Sar once. He does it stream as of recent because he does it with the devs, but I'd still technically stay that qualifies him as the Rex to be a super content creator. And I think it would be the funniest thing ever if he got like added as one and be like my item, Choco Taco 2. <laughs> Just <laughs> complete meme edition. Oh yeah. Literally. Uh it would be called Burrito Ringer. <laughs> <laughs> not, or just the ball not, ta ball. not Taco Bell, <laughs> the burrito ringer. I don't know. <laughs> and it would I be guess a, new, new POI. Exactly. <laughs> um, all right. That's an interesting little list. And I'll talk about mine a little bit. I'm going to let Weezy go first, but uh, we kind of. No, you can go first. Oh, you want me to go I'm first? Still thinking. Okay. I'm still thinking. Okay. That's perfect because a lot of mine, I've discussed this a ton in public spaces. A lot of mine already line up with popcorn. I was. I have been team um, Rock Candy Wolf, aka Setsuna Wolf, and Deli SYS for a very long time. I've been shouting their praises from the rooftops for at least the last nine months for that program. Um, <clears throat> so for when it comes to Setsuna, them being a uh, a Twitch partner and already having their own like set in audience, not audience of SAR people, but their own set in audience that oh, also a ton of people to the game, yeah, yeah they've brought a ton of people to the game. They're a perfect character representation of what I would want, um, and so I thought that they're pretty much like a shoe in. I feel like they've been kind of discouraged. I've seen them talk about it a little bit um, about it, but yeah, uh, hopefully we'll see a big return from them during Q two. I know it's been a little quiet. And um, my other one, Deli SYS, just because Deli, I feel like, has put in the grind and the time for especially a block where there has been no streamers or, or no love. Content. And they just come out banger, banger stream every single time. So friendly, such a good character representation. So they've been um, up there for me as well. And then I've actually never thought about Umbra. That's a, that's a pretty interesting one. Um, Umbra is one that I kind of like slapped in there because I realized certain traits aligned with them along of every single stat I had on my list. So I'm like, huh, they are a really good candidate, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, my my whole thing is I've I've talked about this publicly. We've talked about this as well, Popcorn. My whole thing yeah. has always been I want to see a different different types of content creators. So, for example, we have the super educational, helpful Star content creators, you know, that's Irma, right? That's 
There's a few other that well, I, I wouldn't give well. to be in that role. Yeah, we have the super creative artist super CCs, right? That's obvious. We have so many of those, right? And yeah. so what I have wanted to see specifically is the event hosts. Now, Fluff does a great job with the once a month, what, first, wait, first, literally the first day first of the month, month, right? Yeah, yeah no. first of every month, um, the, the Sheep Pub, uh, the Fluff TV, you know, events. But I want a super CC that is all in on community events. And so when I think about the people who like in their, I don't want to say SAR prime, but like, you know, just lately have been really good at bit being event minded and just creating a space for a community to get together and laugh and just take the load off their shoulders and chill. I have actually thought about lost lost is the guy that can do squads and just chill and have fun, but he loves doing stuff like, you know, hide lost and seek, hide and seek and, and all that stuff. So I'm if I can to, add in something really quickly, yeah. just like quick. Huge shout out to Suhei. Like they have been oh, giving yeah. CC so many tools to like host events just for no reason besides, hey, I want to do it because I feel like it would be helpful. It, like the whole program to basically say, push one button, you teleport X to B. And it's just... And oh, drops every so single good. thing that you need. Dude, Suhei has been like literally he has carried a better part of one year of my content for SAR because every single time I have a custom game mode idea i take it to suhei and suhei does it for me in 24 hours it's disgusting how intelligent that guy is and how valuable to the community they are every single one of my scripts that i've ever used for one of my events that i came up with dodgeball that was suhei uh the hide and seek one button that was suhei that created that program um what else it's hard to believe that like it's so hide and crazy seek started so long ago and now it's just like automated yeah, automated hide and seek, yeah, automated dodgeball, automated one v one and four v four duels. I asked them for, they made it happen. Like I remember Suhei when it first started, like five valuable. through, no one knew what they were doing when they were trying to set it up. It was like, let's go to let, let's set it up on um, what was it? It was farm and bamboo, and then let's do it in Walking Dead and have there be a set number of chickens that hunt you down. Like it was just, it was the wild west of creating stuff, and now it's just. Beep, so boop, you push one button so and the refined. whole thing's set up. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I didn't even think about that. If we're talking about people supporting the game, Suhei has done wonders. Um, but once again, I have no idea what the definition of support is widely. Um, it would it, probably have to be set in stone. But Yeah, if it's talking about yeah. creating assets for other people to lift other people up, then Suhei has been so insanely valuable in that regard, you know? Um, Any form of support is a recognize, should be recognizable. Yeah, especially with like wiki articles as well they do such a good job because i've seen i post in there be basically like you need to update the wiki on tape to go from three seconds to 3.2 three people swarm in and they're like i'll do it it's weird i actually had never done anything with the wiki until like the last two months and i was researching things for videos and i came across old outdated things and i just like fixed it oh yeah that, that's <laughs> yeah, what just, me and uh, i just fixed it i was just yeah. like oh that's this is what cool. me and neon have been doing like every once in a while we just hop into a call and we'll be like let's find some goofy ass uh -uh stuff while you're testing something like they were testing out um basically to make a feedback concept for a beehive throwable which basically it, it's like a skunk bomb except you know bees are like brr, brr, and they just fly around and sting you while doing that we um i think what was it we discovered that like depending on your ping the hunting rifle can actually outrange the sniper if you're an NA versus EU, but it doesn't work the same way around going opposing, which was so whack because then I tested it in NA and I thought I was having a stroke because it wasn't working. But, like, yeah, no, me and him, we've spent so much time getting stuff updated on the wiki. Like, um, every single gun sound effect has pretty much been by Neon, and in some of the images, you can actually see me shooting the weapon. <laughs> Because we spend hours upon hours just testing gun noises. Yeah, I'm trying to find this. Oh, I found it. Ah, like I Did was you looking at the little red panda in the streetwear outfit. Dude, I actually just went up and found my message. This was from last month on the 8th. 
I was like, hey, how often do we clean up old wiki things? For example, the season eight often. trivia says that the pass is the only one that gives player a brand new photo for the photo booth, which is now outdated with the Penguin Palace photo in the season 10 update. And so I just went and changed the wiki so it reflected that. I'm like, oh, okay, look at me. I'm a little wiki guy too. Look at me. <laughs> I've done one thing ever. Smile, give me that roll. Give me the I wiki know, it's roll. it's very often. If you, um, if you want to change something in the wiki, just go to the wiki section of the Discord, ask, or just sign up and go do it yourself. All like, right. it's pretty open. So hopefully with my, my wandering brain, Wheezy, I have given you enough time to figure out a few yep. characters that you would, I don't know, I shouldn't say characters, a few people from the community that you would like to see <laughs> elevated to that SEC. What do you got for us? Um, I think if I'll be honest, I think Fizz. Fizz or Rosha. Fizz, oh my God. Um, she has done quite a bit for the community. Like she makes, she's make, made memes within the SAR community. She's, she's very funny as a, as a person. And I, I really enjoy gaming there sometimes. Hmm. I feel so Which, bad. I it, forgot it, about it. It's not as often, but it's, that one's it's weird time because time, I always course. hear stories of Fizro and how active they are and like how they have carried a lot of art things, a lot of these, these, yeah, these. Yeah, she's these. very creative. But like in the last year that I follow them, have I seen them go live on SAR more than like five uh -huh. times? Like, I know they've been busy with, like, what? Moving, rebuilding a whole house, garden, sickness, like, I mean, all of these. are from time to time, so. I mean, hey, man, more than five times a year is a lot better than some of the super... I can't make that joke. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you definitely can, and that's okay. Like, it's, <laughs> I, it's funny that you say that because I was just looking at the, is it okay for Star content creators to be critical of the game? And it's like, as long as we foster good faith conversation... Like, oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I feel like this is extremely good faith conversation because all of us want to see the game improve one way or another, you know? So, like, I feel like. Of course, like, this is our game, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're there's a reason that. we're all still here after the years. Yeah. So, like, um, as long as Especially we me. keep that good faith, like, mindset, I feel like we'll be okay. And it's okay to joke about things, too. I have, uh, I'm a big copium with joke type person. So. Uh, I understand. Uh, that. Don't worry. But, yeah, I sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Fazero, um, great choice. Who else you got? Um, I was also gonna say Umbra. Yeah, Umbra was definitely up there. I've noticed like Umbra, Umbra is very uh, helpful within the community um, itself. So, and plus, popping they, up as a reason. They they've been promoting the game quite a bit too. So, I would love to see them be a super content creator, and I hope they're. Uh, support is recognized as a whole. Anybody else for super content creator Weezer? Uh, I mean, I, you. I can say too, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, oh, me? Uh... <laughs> I'm going to be real, Weezy. If we're talking the about fact that you are in, one. <laughs> yeah, the, if we're talking about support as in time played and like helpfulness it's actually crazy that wheezy wheezy was on my i i didn't want to say anyone in the podcast but popcorn you know this i've been saying wheezy for a long time like <laughs> oh i swear like, like dude, my I, big three has been delhi wheezy setsuna like that's been my big three on the radar so yeah because like yeah. E, okay even in like my case i've had the few random straggler like pop up to me and i say oh popcorn what, are you gonna be a super content creator i'm like Ho ho ho, little child! They'll never make me one. I'm too evil. <laughs> yeah, I I've mean, had... I am way at... too <laughs> outlandish, man. <laughs> I mean, I, like, I nothing wrong with that sometimes. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna tell it's this okay. story because it's, okay it's okay just the sure. podcast, and I feel like. But I'll give you an example of why I will never be one. Pixel raids into me one day, and I'm like, oh, hey, it's Pixel. What's the stupidest thing I could do to make an introduction? Oh, hi, I'm Popcorn the Beaver. I like uh, killing children in SVR, of course, uh, because I enjoy <laughs> it's just <laughs> I made it look as bad for myself as possible. Mm. I do uh, not Did care. you mention that last week? I don't think I did, okay. and I <laughs> might have mentioned that at all. <laughs> but here's the thing. I know damn well that I will never be a super content creator, and it's not really my priority anyways. If anything, I'd like to become a mod to help out with the game in more ways, mm. but that's, like, yeah, that's my actual outlook. I'd rather not be a super content creator, because I don't think I'm a good support for the game in a content creation sense. I think I can help with the game in a more legitimate sense, like, community-wise. But alas, I am 
a bit too uh, goobery of a person. Honestly, I think. Wait, well, are we only supposed to say two or three? Uh, I, sa- I said, four. oh, like as little as one up to three. Like, uh, they set up the four. Uh, oh, four. Yeah. I mean, sure. honest, honestly, I didn't want to mention uh, anyone in the podcast either, but I guess, I guess you guys are doing it. I think Broad should get it. <laughs> No, yeah, bro. So you could definitely well, get it. You've been uh, very listen, passionate as about this. Obviously, thing. me talking That's about awesome. events, I want to be that guy. You know, you guys know that. I want like, to you be wanna, that guy. You want to you want a super content creator program that's fragmented into like different aspects of content creation. Pretty much. Like I yeah. want there to be the educational SCCs. I want there to be the creative SCCs. I want there to be event CCs. Like and I want to fill that event void that is only being covered by a once a month event from Fluff. That is very well done and very well run. Much more interesting but, take on the Super Content Creator program that would give the Pixel theme an excuse to sort of clean up and fix the pro te- bleh, program. Yeah, and so you guys know my heart. Like I love bringing people together for fun, and so I've done twenty one major events. It would rather those be community days, which are silly and stupid things like bounty board or melee only or stuff like that, and then actual competitive events. And I've also done like over 30 minor events where like we just do pop-up hide and seek, pop-up dodgeball, pop-up 1v1s. Like I just love hosting community stuff. So obviously when I was talking about other people who have been really good at hosting event stuff, that's just because that's what I want to see more. Like that is what has been the most fun and the most valuable community building that I've seen in this game so far is getting together and just getting to know other people that you have no clue, laugh, you know, cry, whatever you need to do, just like hang out and have a good time and it be in a less serious environment, you know? So that's, that's yeah. my heart. That's my heart. Um, I've been on smoking some serious copium where like I constantly believe like I am one or two or three or four or five good more projects away from being in like contention, but that's like also very unhealthy for me because like, I, yeah, I need to stop that mindset because mm-hmm. I'm I'm getting married this year. I've had less time to stream this year, period. Oh my god, that's my entire, right. You're getting yeah, than my entire life. Yeah, Seriously, I aged. of the last like five years of streaming, this has been my least hour of stream so far, just because of how wild my life has been with uh, yeah. trips and full time work and starting up education again and and everything in between. So like, but I don't know. Yeah. Um. Yeah, there's the answer is there's a lot Wild of good year names. for all of us. Yeah, there's a lot of good names. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like all of these programs were built um, well, pretty well. But it sounds like we've said the same thing, all three of us, for every single program that we've talked about today. Animal Army, CC, and SCC. Just more transparency, more communication. I don't feel like there can ever be too much of that, you know? There can yeah, never there's, be. there's yeah. nothing wrong with transparency as a whole. Like, it actually gives the community a clear mind of yeah. what they are seeing not just like not just a cloudy uh vision vision i would say yeah like, so as a whole i feel like that's a pretty good conclusion we've been going for an hour and 12 minutes i feel like that is just the best conclusion we can come up with is you know communication more needed across the board and these programs can Definitely. be enriched even more than they already are but i also feel like these programs are also already super valuable and we can see yep. direct results of them. Anything else you guys want to say before we end episode two of the Sarcast? Oh, happy Pride Month. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> June 1st. Happy Pride Month, everyone. Weezy, what do you got? Yeah, so happy Pride Month. Uh, and I also, I, I am really hoping that Super Mario will make a comeback as a whole. Not just oh, definitely, within, yeah. within the Not just within the game, but, but with, with the community, too. So... And um, I'm going to be gone for a few days and a great gift to me when I'm gone for the next three days could be some more info coming out because we are now into June, the final month of Q2, technically. Here's hoping. Yep. Yeah, here's to hoping yeah, for weeks. some more teasers or information coming out very soon. Thank you guys so much for watching uh, Sarcast episode two, talking about uh, all of the different programs within uh, Super Animal Rail. I was Broads with Goats. We had Wheezy and Popcorn with us here. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.